The firestorms of 2007 burned so much of San Diego County where so many people lived, and the loss to property was just staggering. And what kept coming home to anyone who saw the destruction was how fickle these windblown fires were. The fire would level one house and leave another one untouched. We'll show you what we mean in this segment. But first, the story of one firefighter who, looking back, was at the right place at the right time to help save and comfort a young victim of the fire. Brooke Lindman is a firefighter. She is particularly enjoying this birthday. Yeah, this was a, a birthday that that almost didn't happen, so um, it's a special one. It was October 21st. She and her crew were trying to protect a home in Potrero from the Harris Fire when the wind shifted. They ran to a fire engine. With her were the homeowner, Tom Varshock, and his 15-year-old son, Richard. Then, the windows of the fire engine blew out. There was a moment that I thought, I cannot believe I'm going to die in, my, in this engine right now. And then something else clicked in, well, you're not. You're getting out of this engine right now. Her own face burned. She was able to open a safety tent that firefighters carry. She and 15-year-old Richard scrambled underneath it. We got into our shel my shelter, and um, I just wanted to calm him down, and he was severely burned. And I, he kept asking me if we were going to die, and I said, no, we're not going to die. Richard was taken to UCSD with burns over 60% of his body. He is facing a long recovery. His father, Tom, died in the flames. And as for Brooke, she suffered burns and smoke inhalation. But I'm healing. I, I'm better off than I was. Three weeks ago, that's for sure. Her ear is burned. She's had skin grafts to her face, but she's alive. And to her daughter, that's all that matters. When I came home, I said, I know mommy probably looks a little funny. She goes, you look perfect to me. I mean, look at it. How does it pick one and not the other? There was no fairness to it, no reasoning with the fates. Half the people have houses, half the people don't. Those who were evacuated could only wait for news. Yep, so I'm nervous. And pray that it wasn't bad news. We're from uh, Rancho Bernardo, and we just heard that our apartments are burning. Some people found out the worst from friends. He just said to me, no bueno. There was John Gamache in Escondido who discovered his neighbor's home in ruins. He's not a policeman or a counselor, but all the same, he had to make the call. Yeah, yeah. I have, a, I have bad news for you, Sean. Your, your home didn't make it. Some of the close calls are just amazing and how frightening we can only imagine. Roger B. Laws, for example. Wow. This is difficult. The couple living down the road were killed when the witch fire swept through their neighborhood. Roger and his wife had no choice but to jump in their swimming pool. And we watched our house uh, literally just melt. While flames towered around them, they stayed in 58 degree water for three hours. It was my daughter's wedding anniversary. And I said, we're not dying on my daughter's anniversary. And in each of the fire areas, stories began to emerge of those whose houses had escaped. Just across the cul-de-sac here, another house is perfectly fine. And those who had not been so lucky. I knew it was going to be pretty hard to turn the corner. And, and uh, one by one, it's pretty hard to turn and see each of your neighbors. And then to see your house. For so many, it was the saddest of homecomings. My room's this little box like goes all the way like right here, and that's my room. This was the only house Ilan Okonski ever knew. His family had been living there almost 20 years. His dad was philosophical. You know, it's a house, so we can have a house anywhere, you know, where the family stays together. It's just a house. We'll build another one. But it's not going to be easy, and sometimes it is the little things that hit you the hardest. My drum set, probably the most special. 
At Palma, Dick Walworth lost the garage in the barn, saved the house, though, banged himself up in the process, torn and dirty, but to Veronica Walworth, oh, he's her knight in shining armor. You know, the buildings, yes, they're gone, but he's here. He did a great job. Yeah. There were so many stories, hundreds of families who just didn't know what they'd find. When some Rancho Bernardo residents were allowed back into their neighborhood, they didn't know, is the house going to be there or is it not? In case they found it was not, there were crisis counseling teams standing by. Up next, some stories that will make you feel good about how San Diego reacted to the firestorms. Examples of people at their best, despite the red winds of October.